Hey, welcome. God bless you. Pastor Jeff, another daily word, capital W. The book of Acts. Wow. We're still in it. We are still in the unfinished chapter. You read through the whole book of Acts, and it's still happening. Now, that chapter may end at any point. We're clearly, it seems to me, in the end times of the period of grace, but this is such a vital, vital book to go through. We're going to take our time, number of key, key lessons, and we have to begin in the first chapter. Let me also say that this may be one of the, at one level, the easiest books to read. It's um, almost chronological in a certain way. There's not a lot of uh, esoteric meanings uh, such that you can find in Revelation, for example. So uh, there's really no excuse not to really know it well. And the tragedy of the modern day Western church is that we don't study it enough. And then far worse than that, we don't implement the amazing powerful gifts of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the very same Holy Spirit then on the day of Pentecost, which we will get to, if not uh, today and on the next uh, video, God willing. But the worst part is that it's not being displayed by the priests and pastors and worship leaders even sometimes in our modern day, quote, church. And we're, we are losing so many people because we are not using the gifts that are displayed here in the book of Acts. Well, let's start in chapter one. So vital. This is out of the New King James. The prologue, it says the former account, oh, by the way, same writer as the book of Luke. He wrote this book. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. Well, he doesn't talk too much about it, but he just says that's what he did, taken up. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Wow, there's... I wish there was so much more he could have expanded on, and he didn't. Well, we can talk to him in heaven, get some more detail. Verse 3, Acts 1, 3, to whom he also presented himself alive. This is so, there's, here's the gospel here. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, having been seen by them during 40 days came out of the tomb and then for the next 40 days, he appeared to hundreds of people close to a dozen different occasions, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking. Yeah, the Lord started to preach, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Wow, would that not have been a remarkable time to be in alive and to listen to the risen Christ in those 40 days to be to be a witness and to watch him preach. And then verse four, look at this, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them. Yes, the, the word there is commanded, not suggested. It's a command. That's, by the way, what the Lord's wanting you and me to do today. When he tells us to do something, it's obey. Rightly so. He, he loves you more than you and I can even contemplate, and he knows always what's best for us. <clears throat> he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Now, that's capitalized. There's a whole other chapter that could be written about that, the amazing promises, going all the way back to Genesis 3, by the way how that seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the snake. The promises of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. 
in verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Let me just say that there are dead churches where the Holy Spirit is not baptized for people. There's no laying on of hands. There's, even in my own community, there are pastors that disbelieve um, the charismatic Pentecostal teachings that I did as a pastor. Um, hey, that's going to be up to them when they kneel before the Lord. But there's division in the body of Christ. There's apostasy. There's deadness because we are not baptizing people with the Holy Spirit, as did Jesus. I'm going to repeat verse 5. This, these are the words of the risen Christ. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So why are we not doing that in our churches? I'll tell you this. Run from a dead church. Start your own. I started one. If I can do it, you can do it. Or find a good church that preaches the word of God, doesn't change it, and moves in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Baptize people in the Holy Spirit so that they are empowered, endued with power, is the fancy theological term, so that you can witness to give the fullness of your life purpose. Okay, verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time, restore the kingdom to Israel. And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Still true today. But, here's the Lord again, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. That's, again, the assignment that you and I have, not to sit in a church on a Sunday service or a Saturday service for an hour or two and then go about your, your week out in the, in the world where no one knows you're a Christian or not. No, that's not the point. You and I are to be receiving the Holy Spirit and then be witnesses. And he says, to me, to me, capital M, in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Really a repeat of that great commission in Matthew 28, the very last or next to the last verse. And then it says in verse 9, now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Whew. Wow. Yep, the ascension. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. How cool is that? Yes, I think it's going to be very soon. Get ready. Repentance is about getting ready. Cleaning up. Cleaning up. Removing the old sin stronghold so that you are more cleansed with the indwelling Holy Spirit. The cleaner you are, the better you are as a vessel for the Lord, as his witness, reflecting the character of Christ himself. That's a witness. And then verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. Yeah, he's going to return to the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. I was in Jerusalem about seven years ago. We went to a place where they say it was, in fact, the, quote, upper room. I don't know. Tour guide. <laughs> Not about to question him. It's about 70 or 80 of us in the group. And we spent, a, I don't know, five minutes or more speaking in our heavenly language 
And there were some beautiful prophecies. Talk about the Holy Spirit. It just descended as you were in that place. So, and when they entered, they went into the upper room where they're staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judas, the son of James. Okay, different Judas, right? All these continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. And look at this, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's the first time, last time here in, in this chapter, she is mentioned in the whole Bible. And with his brothers. So among those that were there in the upper room, Mary and Jesus's brothers, some of whom early, or maybe all of them earlier questioned who he was, didn't know that they were, <laughs> they were brothers of the Messiah. And in those days, verse 15, in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120 and said, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth, mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem. So that field is called in their own language, Akaldama, which is field of blood. For it's written in the book of Psalms, quote, let his dwelling place be desolate and let no one live in it. And let another take his office. Pretty exciting. They're quoting from Psalm 69, verse 25. Therefore, this is Peter saying, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Yes, they wanted someone who could eyewitness the reality that Jesus rose from the dead. And they proposed too. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and they said, you, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas, by transgression, fell that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Thus ends chapter 1. Tell your friends. Have them subscribe. We're going to go through the book of Acts, God willing. God bless you. Until next time.